Hey guys, what's up? It's Big Jack Films here. Happy Holidays! I hope you're eating lots of food, getting lots of presents, and having a wonderful time with your friends and family. But there's something else missing from this realm of December. Oh yeah! The Holiday Specials! Yes, Holiday Specials are one of the greatest times of the season. They can range from heartwarming and family-friendly to Jesus Christ, that's awful! What are the specials we all know and love? Which ones have stood the test of time and are now considered holiday classics? Well, this is my list and we're going to take a look. And considering I celebrate Christmas, it'll be the majority of the theme. So, grab a couple of candy canes, some gingerbread man, and some hot chocolate. For this is Big Jack Films Top 14 Christmas Specials. Number 14, Sailor Moon as the movie, Hearts of Ice. Now I know what all of you trolls are thinking. Hey, this doesn't have any Christmas in it, way. Well, if you take a look at the back of the DVD, it says that they're on Christmas break. So to hell with you, it counts, and we're going to take a look at it anyway. So you might not know this, but I'm a huge Sailor Moon fan. And yes, there will be an in-depth review in the future, so I won't go into much detail on the show's history. So here's the plot of the movie. While the scouts are on Christmas break, See? Told ya. An evil snow queen invades the Earth to freeze the planet. Oh my god, this is the plot of Batman and Robin! Quick, hide it as far away from Joe Schumacher as possible! Meanwhile, Luna is saved from... some guy, who is studying a crystal that fell to Earth that has some connection to the snow queen. While that's going on, Luna has fallen in love with him? I'm not going there. And as the Snow Queen continues to freeze the Earth, it's up to the Sailor Scouts, of course, to save the day. This movie is very cliché and is pretty much an hour's version of an entire season. But that hasn't stopped it from being my favorite out of the three movies. What's great about this movie is that it has a very good, simple plot. And each character has equal screen time that has their moments to shine. The villain is pretty powerful, too. However, her snow dancers are pretty useless and kind of annoying with their Indian screams. It's like they cloned Xena and injected her with helium. Shut the fuck up! And there's also a lot of good action sequences that are well done in animation. There's a lot more to cover in this movie, but maybe I'll go into better depth another time. Overall, Hearts of Ice is the best of the Sailor Moon trilogy. It's fast-paced and entertaining, and if it starts snowing like mad outside, you might want to put on this movie and call the scouts to save the day. Number 13. Rugrats The Santa Experience There's a ton of Rugrats Christmas specials, but I decided the first one is the best of the bunch. The two-part episode deals with a lot of plots. One is about Angelica trying to redeem herself before receiving her gift from Santa. Another involves Chucky's fear of Santa, Phil and Lil deciding what to give each other for Christmas, and even the parents get a bit of a plot in this episode, too. What's great about this special is the tone. It's funny, it's entertaining, and it's heartwarming. The adults' journey on making the perfect Christmas for their kids is quite fun, especially Chaz, who wants to be sure his son doesn't get a Christmas letdown. Chucky's Fear of Santa is something I think all of us kids had growing up, especially myself at one time, so I can relate to him. And seeing him overcome his fear is quite touching. Also with Tommy, it's just trapping Santa that has a lot of cliches from Home Alone. Phil and Lil's story arc is much the same of another Christmas special that we'll get to later on this list. But it's the Angelica Redemption story arc that's the best out of the bunch. I think we all felt that way during Christmas time, in the fears of being ripped off by Santa by trying to do the right thing at the last minute. By the way, while we're on the subject of getting ripped off, take a look at this nightmare Angelica has on Christmas Day. It's Christmas! Oh boy! And they're all for you, princess. Yep, that's 
sums up all our fears. But then it takes a bit of a terrifying twist. Oh, but I do. I know everything. Phil got a new Reptar doll. Lil got a new coloring book. And what did you get? <laughs> Santa! Is that what you do to bad kids? Drown them in coal? You monster! This scene was really terrifying for me as a kid, and it doesn't help that he's voiced by Tony J. We've got to have money. Either way, the Santa experience is a heartwarming, nostalgic special for any 90s kid. If it's been a while since you've seen it, dust off the old VCR and rewatch it. Twelve. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer the Movie I didn't get around to seeing this film until I was in high school, and boy do I regret not seeing it originally. For a film that was cashing in on the other classic versions, it did a pretty damn good job. The animation is not bad, the story fills out well for a feature, the characters have more arc, and the music is... Everyone knows the story of Rudolph, so I won't explain it this time. I'll just get to what I really like about the film. Rudolph is really well developed in this version, and his character goes through a lot of moments, especially in Rejection. Most of his story is a coming-of-age tale. Santa and the villain are pretty good, too. Being voiced by John Goodman and Whoopi Goldberg gives extra points. But there's one character in this movie that I absolutely love, and that's the character of Arrow. Why is that? Because it brings to life one of my all-time favorite cliches. And what could that possibly be? The Bad Boyfriend! God, I love this cliché! I'll bring it up in a later video, but, but the reason I like it is because it gives the hero more of a competition, rather than the villain stealing the damsel in distress. And we all hope for the two to go at it like an awesome Jerry Springer cockfight. You're wearing Zoe's pendant! She just gave it to me for luck. And she's my doe, understand? She's not a trophy and you shouldn't treat her like one. Overall, this film is worth checking out if you want a longer version of the story. With good voices, characters, story, and music, it's well worth the time. Number 11. A Charlie Brown Christmas. This one is one of the most popular for Christmas lovers. Hell, it sparked a ton of Christmas merchandise that I've lost count. The story involves Charlie Brown being forced into directing a Christmas play with his friends, which leads to a lot of moments where you want to put this in the audio. Here's our director! I want you off the fucking set, you prick! Am I gonna walk around and rip your fucking lights down in the middle of a scene? Then why the fuck are you walking right through? You got any fucking idea about, hey, it's fucking distracting having somebody walking up behind Bryce in the middle of the fucking scene. Give me a fucking answer! Seeing him on the verge of screwing up, everyone picks on him, leaving him to wonder what Christmas is all about. He decides to go find a Christmas tree and, feeling bad for the wimpiest one, buys it, leaving his friends to shun on him for his failure. Jesus, this is a frickin' downer! Why the hell is this considered a Christmas classic again? If it's about the heartwarming moments and nostalgia for you guys, I get it, I feel the same way. But the reason I put it so low on the list is because it's so damn depressing. Charlie Brown's friends keep lecturing him for all his solutions to problems, and they keep going. Some friends they are, they're a bunch of dicks. However, they do realize their mistakes, and the end is pretty heartwarming. So I will say that A Charlie Brown Christmas has its good funny moments, but it does have a lot of depression behind it. So if you're one for an all-happy Joy Joy Christmas special, maybe skip this one. Otherwise, take a peek at this present. Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown! Home Alone 1 and 2. 
Yes, this film is a classic and we all know it by heart. About a kid who's left home alone and has to fight off the two bumbling robbers with hilarious slapstick antics. <laughs> I like this film because of many reasons. Kevin's a great character and his story arc is well done. The story by the late John Hughes is funny, clever, and touching. And the music by John Williams? What can I say? It's Christmas to a T. I also love the house the McAllisters live in. And it does show the kind of family I think we all have during the holidays. However, it's the slapstick that every year never gets old. It's absolutely hilarious. I get a crack at it every time. Also, the second one is well done, and I feel it's very underrated. It's bigger in story, scope, and comedy. And let's not forget Tim Curry. I love this guy. He's great in everything. Overall, the first two Home Alone movies are entertaining, heartwarming, and have some of the best slapstick comedy you'll ever see. I'd highly recommend it. Check them out. Now as for the rest of the Home Alone movies, I have this to say to them. You go to hell! You go to hell and you die! Number 9. A Christmas Story. This is one of those movies you love because it's a classic or dislike because it plays over and over and you're forced to watch it. Personally, it's about a 50-50 for me. The story is about Ralphie and his adventures on getting the perfect Christmas gift. And what does everybody say, of course? Shoot your eye out. You'll shoot your eye out! You'll shoot your eye out, kid. This is another one of those family-friendly movies that has a lot of great moments. I love Ralphie's story and the many ways he tries to get the gift he wants. And all the adventures that follow do reward him in the end. Which, I'll be honest, when he gets that gun, a lot of folks, including myself, tear up with joy. The other characters have their moments too, and a lot of the comedy is well done, but it's the narrator who gets the best laughs. The way he describes the story has a lot of real funny moments. The holy grail of Christmas gifts, the Red Rider 200 shot range model air rifle. Oh no, it was the classic mother BB gun block. Randy lay there like a slug. It was his only defense. You shoot your eye out? My mother must have gotten him his shields. There could be no other explanation. This is one worth the time to watch. Just keep in mind to view at once, because on TV, this thing plays constantly. Now, much like the Home Alone sequels, you're probably all wondering what I think of A Christmas Story 2, the official sequel. Join us right here! Let's move on to the next number. Number 8. The Grinch. This is the film that, to be honest, I feel is better than the original. While the cartoon version had its funny moments, this one has a lot more. The comedy is fantastic. Jim Carrey is great as the Grinch, giving some funny moments from the character. Another unmistakable sign of the DVDs. I'm a psycho. Kids today, so desensitized by movies and television. It's because I'm weird, isn't it? As for the rest of the movie, well, let's take a quick look. The story is the same as the original works of Dr. Seuss, including the rhymes that even add a few narrated by Hannibal Lecter, no less. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. We even get a pretty well-done backstory to the Grinch and why he hated Christmas in the first place, though it does get really depressing. The other characters are well done too, Cindy Lou who has probably the other big role, trying to bring everybody together for the holidays, though she might get a little too conflicting with the villain of the movie, the mayor. Everyone giving him kebabble. Doesn't it seem superfluous? The cheermeister is the one who deserves a back slap or a toast. And it goes to the soul at Christmas who needs it most. And I believe that soul is the Grinch. Gee, she's like the Who equivalent to Hillary Clinton. By the way, the mayor's a pretty good villain. We do get a bit of corruption in his arc, which I wish was a little expanded. And between you and me, he reminds me of Rob Ford. Also, the love interest is quite good. Though a little slutty and kind of a player at times, even as a little girl. 
Jesus. Also, the sets are quite impressive, and Rick Baker's makeup is always fun to look at. Overall, The Grinch is great fun and has a lot of laughs to go with it. Be sure to steal this one from under the tree if you get the chance. Given the choice between the two of you, I'd take the seasick crocodile. Number 7. The Rankin Bass Christmas Specials. Yeah, yeah, you all knew these were coming, so let's take a look at these classic specials. There's a ton of these specials all over the place, so I'll just go into the ones I enjoy. Frosty the Snowman is one of the best because it's the more well-known. Rudolph also has its time to shine too. The Little Drummer Boy is depressing, and A Year Without a Santa Claus is... kind of boring but fun. However, I think Santa Claus is Coming to Town is my favorite of the bunch, mostly because it has one of the better origin stories of Santa. Most of these specials I enjoy also because of the classic stop-motion animation, which you all know I love to death. All the puppets are well sculpted and made. I think one of my favorites is the Abominable Snow Monster from Rudolph. I would love to have that puppet on my shelf. The songs are really memorable too. My favorites include Silver and Gold. Silver and Gold. Silver and gold. We are Santa's elves. And it's a difficult responsibility. It's a difficult responsibility that you accept from the number one lawmaker, me. Though some songs, like the lap song, seem a little outdated and kind of creepy. If you sit on my lap today, a kiss, a toy, is the price you'll pay. When you tell what you wish for, in a whisper, be prepared to pay. Ugh, so creepy. Doesn't help that he's voiced by this guy. The Care Bears. Anyway, these specials are a lot of fun. With great stop-motion animation, fun characters, and memorable songs, they are indeed classic specials. Oh, my golly, have a holly jolly Christmas this year. Number six, A Flintstones Christmas Carol. Out of all the versions of A Christmas Carol, this one is definitely my favorite. The plot involves Fred getting the title role of Scrooge in a play of the classic story. Which begs the question, how the hell do they know about A Christmas Carol when the book was written in the 1800s? In fact, how the hell do they celebrate Christmas if Jesus isn't born yet? Just eat your fucking cereal. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. So during this time playing Scrooge, Fred does get a little too into character, becoming a Scrooge himself, using the story and character to redeem himself not only in the play, but in reality too. This one is the better of the bunch, mostly because of the nostalgia. I still own the VHS that was recorded years ago, showing not only the film, but a ton of awesome 90s commercials, but I'm getting off track. The other reason I like this one better is because it has a bit of a twist to the story, showing how some people in roles get into the character too much that they become the character, and the way Fred discovers this is well done. There's a ton of fun moments and some great laughs. It's now out on DVD, and I'd say check it out. It's worth the time to watch and reflect on some good old 90s television. Number 5. Winnie the Pooh and Christmas 2. This is a Christmas special that a lot of people seem to forget about, and it's kind of sad. The story involves Pooh and the gang deciding what they want for Christmas by writing a letter to Santa. But as they keep changing their minds, the letter begins to run out of time before Christmas can arrive. The special is more about the cute factor, and it really shows. Pooh is the driving force of the story, as he always is, and the other characters have some great funny moments, too. However, I will say at one point in the special, it gets really, really depressing. I mean, really depressing. When all hope seems lost and Pooh decides to take the letter himself to the North Pole, they treat it like he's about to die! It will be worth having no Christmas, Piglet, if I can bring Christmas to all of you. Oh, Pooh. Goodbye, Pooh. Goodbye, everyone. And Merry Christmas. I guess they were going with the idea of sending a message out about sometimes we can't all be together on Christmas, especially those we've lost. And this is the only downside to the special in order to get a few tears from the kids. 
Seriously, take a look at more of these scenes and tell me you don't get those vibes. Oh, come on, piglet old pal. Look at us. We're happy with your Christmas spirit. What's Christmas if your best friend isn't here to share it? I'd give it up to have Pooh Bear here. You know, so would I. Me too. If only, if only we had him back. But who cares? Winnie the Pooh and Christmas 2 is a great childhood classic, and for those who watched it for the first time and have kids of their own, this is definitely something to pass the torch. Wait for this. Silly old bear. Number 4. Christmas Eve on Sesame Street. There's a ton of Sesame Street Christmas specials out there to choose from, but I'm going for the one that's for old school fans like myself, and this one is by far the best. Much like the Santa experience, there's a ton of subplots. One includes Bert and Ernie trying to get the perfect gift for each other by sacrificing the items they hold dear. So what, they pay off their purchases with items? How the hell do they keep up with their apartment rent? Ah! Uh, hello. <sighs> Son of a bitch, I'm on my way! On second thought, never mind. But the main plot involves Big Bird trying to solve the mystery of how Santa gets through the chimneys. The art goes through a lot by the end, and really warms your heart. Like a lot of specials I've talked about, there are some very funny moments. I think my favorite is with the Cookie Monster trying to write a letter to Santa with every piece of equipment available. And the slapstick is perfect! No cookies! Oh yeah, 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 cookies! Kawabunga! We get so excited when we think of cookies! That is fucking hilarious. And for the rarity, the original songs are quite enjoyable. Overall, this Sesame Street Christmas special really brings out the Christmas season. With great laughs, heartwarming moments, and songs from the Muppets we all know and love, this one is a definite watch over the holidays. And if that isn't a true blue miracle, I don't know what one is. Number 3. Sharon, Lois, and Bram. Candles, Snow, and Mistletoe. This is something a lot of young folks and some people my age may not remember, but Sharon, Lois, and Bram was a big part of my youth. Hell, way more than Sesame Street. And this classic special really shows in my opinion. The plot involves the trio heading on a train to spend the holidays. While they meet several other interesting characters, the train breaks down, leaving the three singing duos to go on a magical Christmas adventure. There's just something about this special that's memorable and has a very large charm. Aside from the three, we can't forget about the elephant in the room, literally. The other characters are also fun. I especially love the guy who's obsessed with some sort of chocolate that I always wanted to try. Chocolate? Shh. What the hell is that stuff anyway? There's also a conductor who I swear to god lost the audition for Shining Time Station. And then there's the station master who reminds me of Bernard Hill. And we see that he has a heartbreaking and yet happy ending to his story. And of course, there's that cliché of the old guy who may or may not be Santa, but I won't get ahead of myself. However, the best thing about this special is the songs. God damn, I love these songs. Each one is memorable and classic. I think my favorite songs are the ones using the Nutcracker score. Look what the wind blew in a lovely gust of winter. Jack Frost, where have you been? The snow is here, it's time to play. And Miss Fogarty's Christmas Cake. That alone I can't get enough of. It really brings out the inner drunken Irishman in all of us. There were plums and fruits and cherries. There were citrons and raisins and cinnamon too. There were nutmeg cloves and berries. And a crust that was nailed in with blue. There were caraway seeds in abundance. Sure to work up a fine summer cake. Ah, to a kill a man twice after in one slice of Miss Fogarty's Christmas Cake. Yes, it would kill a man twice after in one slice of Miss Fogarty's Christmas Cake. Yes, it would kill a man twice after in one slice of Miss Fogarty's Christmas Cake.
is one of the best, with great music, characters, and an overall Christmas spirit. Number two, Bad Santa. This has got to be the funniest Christmas special ever. I watch this every year, and I can't get enough of it. The story involves an alcoholic asshole of a Santa and his dicky sidekick elf who spend the holidays as department store mascots. And on every Christmas Eve, they rob the mall and make off with enough cash to last them for an entire year. And if that doesn't show the true meaning of Christmas, then... I don't know what one is. I don't want to give too much away on this one, because there is a heartwarming feel to it, during and at the end. What I will say though, it has some of the funniest dialogue and characters you will ever see. There's so many great jokes and laughs that they never get old. Oh no, performance? Yes, uh, your performance, you know, the, um... Performance like sexual? I'm an eating, drinking, shitting fucking Santa Claus. I'm on my fucking lunch break, okay? Uh, I piss myself. What the fuck you think you're doing? You son of a bitch! Billy Bob Thornton, Bernie Mac, John Ritter, they all have something to laugh about. In case you hadn't noticed, I'm a motherfucking dwarf. So unless you got a forklift handy, maybe you should lend a hand, hmm? That figures. You want all kind of set aside, special treatment because you're handicapped. You all the same. Special treatment? I'm three foot fucking tall, you asshole! I can stick you in my ass, small fry. Yeah? You sure it ain't too sore from last night? You got some lip on you, midget? Well, these lips were on your wife pussy last night. If you want a dark comedy that shows the true meaning of Christmas in a more different approach, this is one to check out. You won't regret this present under your tree anytime soon. Watch it. Now I know what you're all thinking. Wow, that's a ton of good Christmas specials. What could possibly top all those? Well, the answer may surprise you. What could it possibly be? Let's take a look. And the number one favorite Christmas special is... The Toronto Santa Claus Parade. So, here's the thing about number one. I'm talking to this in my own tone, no jokes whatsoever. The Toronto Santa Claus Parade to me is basically childhood, and just basically a lot of memories from my youth, and uh, you know, it meant so much to me. Uh, you know, like, it, it's all the floats, all the bands, everything. It's just there's something about it that's absolutely amazing, and I look forward to every year. Um, another reason is because my grandmother, I, when I was young, just used to tape every single parade for me, and it's to the point where I have tons and tons of VHSs that date probably all the way back to 1995 of parades, and what's great about these specials and what's great about these parades is that they, um, not only is it a sentimental value to me, but, um, you know, the tapes have so much memories of, like, commercials and stuff all the way from the 90s, and great commercials, great floats, like, hell, there was a frickin' reboot float, there was a Space Jam float, there was a Beast Wars float, a frickin' Beast Wars float! And it's just, you know, all these great floats, great bands, and there's just something about it that brings Christmas out. It just really, it starts the holiday season, essentially. It really starts Christmas for me. It's just a piece of nostalgia for me, and, you know, I really look forward to going to these things as much as I can every year, and then watching it on TV. Um, and what's interesting also is that it's lasted so goddamn long. I mean, it's lasted since the 1900s. Now, if you think about it, it beats out how long the New York Thanksgiving Day Parade has been out, which has been about 80 years, whereas the Toronto Parade has been about 100 years or more. 
So if you think about it, without the Toronto Santa Claus Parade, we wouldn't have the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Or hell, any other parades for that matter, you know? And it's mostly for me, it's because of the nostalgia, and it be it's because it really brings out the holiday season. So, you know, overall, the Toronto Santa Claus Parade, man, does that bring out some good memories, good nostalgia, good advertisements, you know, good floats, good good bands and everything, and most of all, you know, Santa himself. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, the Toronto Santa Claus Parade, my number one favorite Christmas special. So that's my top 14 favorite Christmas specials. I hope you enjoyed it. So from here on, you know, happy holidays, happy Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, happy Hanukkah, you know, spend time with your friends and family, uh, get some good frickin' goodies, you know, some good presents this year, um, eat a good dinner, you know, holiday dinner, you know, turkey, ham, whatever you eat on the holidays, uh, have a good new year, and um, I will see you guys later. So. Uh, yeah, uh, see you later. This is Big Jack Films, signing off.